Hello, I'm back. It's Andrew Ace. You spell my last name though, U-Y-S. It's, I'm from South Africa before I moved to Canada. It's, it's a thing. Well, really, that was pretty easy to sum up, actually. So, this is part two of my latest graphic novel review. I just covered Akira and Thor, God of Thunder, Volume 4, which was actually called The Last Days of Midgard. So, up next, I have... Legends of the Guard. Uh, so this is another volume, uh, Legends of the Guard Volume 2, sorry. This is another volume of Mouse Guard by David Peterson, though with the Legends um, series, he's brought in another, a number of other collaborators who uh, have illustrated um, the, the short stories. So um, I'm going to just take a quick look through this list here, because it's a bit more than I'm going to be able to remember off by heart. Uh, and you've got work by Stan Sakai, Nick uh, Tapalansky, um, Ben Caldwell, Christian Slade, Rick Geary, Gemma Saloum, Eric Canetti, uh, C.P. Wilson III, uh, Corey Godby, um, Bill Willingham, which some of you will recognize from Fables, um, along with Brad Thompt. On his story, Jason Z, uh, Justin Gerard, and Dirk Shearer, Shearer. If I've forgotten anyone or missed anyone who is a colorist, a letterer, I mean, this is this is a book that has a lot of people's love involved, and it shows. Um, the best part is that not only do you get some work from David Peterson, uh, some of these beautiful pages here, and there's more in the back I can show you in a moment. Um, you also get to sample. Uh, a number of different creators artwork uh, all set in the mouse guard world uh, the premise for this book is that there's a tavern and the mice who oh the tavern owner the bill their bill their long-standing bill have been invited to come tell a tale uh, the best story um, clears their tab everyone else has to pay up and this like I said is volume two uh, there's also whoo, at least three, four other Mouse Guard volumes. Um, I'm thinking Fall, Winter, Legend of the Black Axe. I might be forgetting one, actually, rather shamefully. And like I said, um, you get some uh, beautiful work by David Peterson as well uh, in the back where he uh, has in the tavern um, a number of paintings and he explains the legends and the stories of those paintings at the end of the book. I know for a fact that actually he's built um, a diorama that lays out uh, this in um, in 3D, you know, like model space, and that's the commitment that David Peterson brings to his um, Mass Guard books. He's both the writer and the illustrator, you know, the creator um, of the regular series, and uh, it's great to see a number of other creators um, getting to share in that world and uh, also share their art with us. So. Uh, Definitely worth checking out. This book, I would say, is all ages. Um, I have bought the Mouse Guard Fall for readers probably starting at age 8 uh, through to readers at age 40. It's just one of those classic books that you can't go wrong with. Great read. So, last book for today, um, a little bit different. Uh, I chatted about Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons last week uh, and their IDW uh, titles. And this is Dark Sun. Um, one of their worlds. So if you've got D&D, &D, uh, in D&D, &D, where you can create your own world, they have, though, the Dragonlance series of novels, and Corinne is, I believe, the name of the planet. Uh, you have Dark Sun with the planet Athos. You have uh, Forgotten Realms, and I am really embarrassed I can't remember the name of that. Um, but as you can see, so, uh, you know, um, Ravenloft. Grail? Greyhawk? Was that one of the old ones? Um, a Dark Sun played a, a much more prominent role in 4th edition. I played it, or played in the world, in AD&D 2nd edition. Um, the book, it's tough. I love the Dark Sun world. It's very gritty, very difficult. It's this whole uh, apocalypse planet where magic's drained, uh, literally the planet of its life force. Um, and, and it makes for a very dark, gritty D&D uh, &D read. I've always likened it to, say, playing cyberpunk in Dungeons and & Dragons. And this book certainly conveys that grittiness, that harshness of the world. Uh, and in that regard, the story is phenomenal. Um, the art, though, left a little 
me wanting more? I, I don't know. It, it's certainly a style that doesn't appeal to me subjectively. So, to, you know, critique it beyond that is to say that I guess, you know, I was already probably a little set against it. I found it a little simplified, a little cartoony, um, and that wasn't what I was expecting from uh, a story that, in a way, I kind of see as the Frank Miller Sin City of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, uh, that said, uh, it's still got some phenomenal material at the back. If you're a D&D player, you want to recreate some of these worlds, some of these stories. Um, and again, um, beautifully hardbound book. Uh, you know, if, he, if the reader is a Dark Sun fan like myself, they'll definitely enjoy it. Um, if though you're wanting to sort of introduce them to Dungeons and Dragons comic books or Dungeons and Dragons, I'd probably uh, suggest the book I recommended last week, uh, Shadow Plague, Shadow of the Plague. Uh, this one's called uh, Ianto's Tomb. Ianto's Tomb. So guys, oh, and I would say that this is probably 12 or 13 and up. Um, I mean, it's still Dungeons and Dragons, but it's not you know as dark as Dungeons and Dragons gets. Um, they're still trying to you know market for younger readers and younger players to be able to find the world and, and, you know, join in the adventures. Well, guys, like I said, those are four graphic novels I just finished reading.